Hey you guys, I wanted to come on here for a moment and talk to you about something that was sent to me and I was extremely displeased to say the least, although not surprised to see the amount of debauchery, depravity, degeneracy, you know, all the descriptive words I can think of. So in past videos, you guys know that I've always upheld blackness on a pedestal because I value who we are as a people. And so naturally I will discuss different ways to improve the conditions of our community, therefore ushering in a future in which our people can love each other and support each other without any type of outside validation. Now it is of the utmost importance to be cognizant of our behavior because it can influence those who are easily impressionable. And for me, I can recognize when something has the potential to go awry, which is why we must take steps towards correcting said conduct. Now, with that being said, we have to address the problematic situations as they unfold because without properly vetting the undesirable social interactions and cultural norms, it develops into an unhealthy pathology, which then becomes normalized and accepted into that community's way of life. For our community in particular, this happens more often than not, and I attribute this to our naivete when it comes to realizing how detrimentally harmful that certain situations and circumstances prove to be. Now, something else that I have to get out of the way because I think it'll help you guys understand why I don't like to identify with being pro-Black. Um, considering the numerous hypocrisies that are associated with it, that term has become so convoluted and distorted that I hear some black people saying how now other races outside of their own people are pro-black and when I hear some of us speak this way I just get up and walk away because it's like that's complete nonsense. For some odd reason there is a small percentage of us who based on our actions believe that racism is apparently over because we abandon not just history but the social and political climate of what is still taking place today. You know, you have some black people even justify their actions by saying that they're pro-black right before engaging in intercourse with other races as a means to ensure that their status in the community remains intact, despite the conflict of interest it creates within that statement. Now, it draws similarities to heterosexual people exchanging dialogue to others by saying things like no homo. I don't know why people cannot simply just be straightforward in the decisions that they make. So say what you mean and mean what you say. Do it unapologetically. Speak with bravado, intent, and purpose. In a sense, these two interactions appear to be juxtaposed by the fact that some form of justification is needed to explain why they choose to divert from their allegiance or alliance. But the question then becomes, why is there a need for an explanation to take place at all if you are resolute in your decision? Is it based on a conscious thought? You somehow realize that something isn't quite right about your decision, so you give a disclaimer to avoid what you know will be judgment. Does a second thought not occur in your cognitive process telling you to perhaps, I don't know, maybe use some foresight because I'm sure had you taken the time to contemplate the decision carefully, it would not face backlash the way that it does. Now that I had those preliminary thoughts expressed, let's get into this shit show and try our hardest to make sense of what's transpired. Now, I was sent some screenshots of black content creators on Twitter who have a substantially large following, and this subscriber had informed me the reason as to how these followings increase exponentially over the years. Now, I want you guys to take some time to review these screenshots and due to privacy, I will block out the names of these creators because I don't want any ultra sensitive crybabies coming my way and talking about copyright infringement or permission for displaying profile information even though it's public.
All right, so now that you guys have had a chance to look over several of these screenshots, I'm certain that some of you are familiar with race play in the sex realm, which consists of fantasies where interracial pairings will sometimes exhibit behaviors that are reminiscent of past trauma or in some cases display a certain level of dominance for gratification purposes. So it's a lot to dissect, but we'll start with this image. So first things first, I need for Black people to understand that the larger society has had sexual access to us for several centuries at this point. And if they had our best interests at heart, we wouldn't still be protesting about how important our lives are 400 years later. Some harsh truths are going to be discussed here, so if the truth is abrasive to the ears of some, I suggest you stop watching now. If not, then let's continue. Now, it's no secret that those within the Republican Party showcase insurmountable levels of racialized propaganda and ideologies, as evidenced by those who are put into positions of power or prestige. Simply having intercourse with one is not enough to change that individual's lifetime way of thinking with contempt for your community. I'm not sure if some of you have seen my past videos, but I've always told you that racism is often expressed in unconventional ways, and patriotism is one of those methodologies. Creating laws and legislations that purposely disenfranchise your people, cutting your people off of quality resources needed for sustenance such as employment, loans from banks for black home ownership, higher health insurance premiums, thus making health insurance unaffordable, down to the very fabric of asking what race you are on any application in this country. It is also intentional, deliberate, and designed for your people to fail at almost every avenue. You giving them what they want teaches them a lesson how. And I want an answer to this way of thinking. It's not only unintelligible, but in no way, shape, or form does that make the slightest bit of sense. It is definitely symptomatic of a dormant mental illness, I'm sure. And what's more disturbing is a seemingly, and I say that with quotes, seemingly positive imagery or adjectives that he's using to describe this person's internal anatomy and follows it up with the fact that the man may pass some kind of law. Notice he didn't say influence his future legislation for the benefit of black people. You know how something is so utterly nonsense that you have to just laugh like, really, man? And then on top of that, he said, hopefully. So you don't even know if your little act is going to be a guarantee, which it won't. You basically gave him what he wanted, and he's going to continue on his merry way with making sure that his people are good to go. And meanwhile, the state of our community will remain in the same state of perpetuity because you believe that something as simple as a sexual encounter is enough to change that. It's so comical that it's disturbing. Disturbing as in the Joker disturbing. Now, next on this itinerary of debauchery, are these two side-by-side -side screenshots. Now, we can knock out two birds with one stone on this, if you guys were paying close attention to my preliminary thoughts. Now, I do apologize, you guys, about the quality of this blurry screenshot, and I try to do some research on my own to locate it myself in hopes of giving a clearer image, but conveniently, that post is no longer available, so this will have to do. Now, these content creators both have exceptionally large followings, but the reason isn't too hard to figure out. And it's actually insulting on so many levels that I can't begin to fathom why some Black people think that this is feasible. Um, so reparations being relegated to sexual access to the larger society is not rewarding at all. When you think about the inhumane things that their forefathers did to our people from a historical perspective, that is absolutely the last thing I would want from them in any capacity. Other groups of people have actually received some type of monetary distribution or land settlement as a result of the disparagement that their people endured at the hands of tyrannical oppression. For us, it seems to be a unique scenario in which we don't get anything at all, or we are promised symbolic exchanges that do not hold weight. And I want you guys to pay attention to something else because I had referenced this earlier at the inception of the video. Notice how this creator says he's pro-black. So that somehow makes it all right to engage in this scene. That's that disclaimer I was telling you about. It's hilarious in a way because why make mention of that at all? You wanted to partake in this encounter because you wanted to. 
why he tries to word it as if it's some form of obligation escapes me. But just to reiterate, this is why I don't identify with being pro-Black, because a lot of hypocrisy surrounds that space in regards to what it is. And I often say that I am for the empowerment, the betterment, and refinement of behaviors as it pertains to the Black community. Yes, I do say all that because every damn body at this point is pro-Black. Like I said, at this point, it's a three ring circus worse than Jerry Springer. We want financial gains, land, ownership of major corporations, not sexual access, not statues, not our faces on money or symbolic gestures. Tangibles is what our hearts desire. Things that don't depreciate in value. And I'm telling this narrative so as to not create a false narrative where this becomes the norm and we think that we're being compensated in some sick, twisted, demented way. Now let us observe and discuss the third exhibit. You know, I want to say trolling, but then again, you have to wonder. This individual was bold enough to put this out there with laughing emojis, so it makes you really wonder if it was done with purpose, but I digress. So this creator relegated his participation to watching slave movies and then states that he called someone over the whitest that he could think of and then states that he wanted to be referred to as the main character from the Roots movie. Now, I want to pause for a moment and ask all of you, is this insanity? Because even as I read this, it's extremely disconcerting and I truly wish to understand why it's something that's a joke. Um, something I forgot to also point out to you guys was the dates for the original post, which it looks like that it's March 1st. So when these posts were made, it was sometime shortly after Black History Month. Um, and again, these were years ago. So these are not recent. I think one of them are recent, but there are two of them that are kind of like a little bit antiquated. Um, so yeah. I'm guessing because right after Black History Month, that's what prompted these eccentric posts. Um, another question. So if you are filming with these people, why not film with other Black content creators, especially during Black History Month? Like that was a perfect opportunity for them to gain some notoriety and increase their followings. But you decided to waste it on those who view you as nothing more than a fetish. My perception of the larger society's desire for black bodies is one that could be compared to an animalistic appetite. This is corroborated by the terms that they have designated for black people like BBC or something that relates to the color of your skin. Now, keep in mind that a fetish is mere objectification. You are like a walking dildo to them and nothing more. And while in your presence, they may deny this. It's quite the contrary in your absence. I just want you to all be aware of that. And I think it's also foolish to watch all of those movies and not understand the actual message, which should have been about perseverance. The fact that Black people were so resilient and they overcame arduous challenges in the face of adversity. Some might feel compelled to say it was a joke or it wasn't meant to be taken seriously, but when it comes to prominent Black figures in our ancestors' perception of us, I do take those very seriously. If you are going to engage in whatever abhorrent, deplorable acts, fine, but I please implore you to steer clear of social and political topics and or statements because then it comes off across as making light of our situation in this country. Um, and in a nascent way, I feel this is what directly contributes to regression and perpetual stagnation. Anyways, I had to get all that off of my chest. It was honestly annoying the hell out of me. I don't know any of these people personally, nor do I have the desire to get to know them. I do want to thank my subscriber for this interesting content um, because I needed to dispel the narrative that this type of ignorance is acceptable when it's far from. Let me know your thoughts on this and make sure to share this. And I look forward to hearing you guys' thoughts.